Hey, hope you're having a great day. Come on in. And I wanted to alert you because we've got a potential major storm that could blast across the United States here from the 26th through the 30th of December, bringing all hazards possible, including severe weather, blizzard potentials, rain, wind, and much more. But before we begin, click the subscribe button if you're new to the channel and the bell notifications if you want daily in-depth weather forecast breakdowns, long-range forecasts, much more detailed than you would see on TV. And comment below, how do you like the winter so far? Are you liking it? Are you not liking it? Do you want more snow? Comment below. So let's get right into it here. So what are we looking at right now? Well, we're going to look at the upper level pattern first, and then I'm going to go day by day looking at the radar and all of that for you in the future here. So Right now we're looking at 500 millibar height anomalies where we get our troughs and ridges. There's a ridge out here in Alaska. Now this is extremely important because it could create some deepening you know, trough activity just to the east, which will support a large storm system that will start off in the west coast and move all the way up into the northeastern United States. Now watch what happens here around the 26. You see that trough now, and finally we get some troughing you know the ridge is kind of pushing it to the south here and the the troughing is now moving into the western united states around the 26th usually right out ahead of these troughs where there's divergence that's where your storm system is going to develop and so a storm is probably going to develop in the west coast around the 26th now as we head towards the 27th and so you can see this deep this deepens and kind of really uh goes all the way into the southwestern United States around the 27th. But watch what happens as this moves into the Midwest. Really closed off negative tilt. When you see that look, when it's really closed off and you get a negative tilt like that, and it's not too ridgy north of it, you're going to get a very powerful snowstorm or storm system in the central, northern, and sometimes even southern United States with this type of look with ridging to the east. You got that trough, long wage trough, another little wave out here, but this is the main storm we're looking at. So this is the thing we're gonna wanna keep an eye on. This type of look is very important for large storm systems. Now, there was a lot of hype, a lot of out of control, you know, news channels and et cetera, that were forecasting all these big storms in the east the past couple of weeks. And really, I, I wasn't forecasting any of that. I never really put anything out maybe a three to six inch, that's what I said. I, I didn't see it with that pattern, but this particular pattern, at least short range here, with this type of look, is supportive for a, a major winter storm. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna kinda zoom in here, and I'm gonna show you the energy swirling around the storm system. What we're gonna look at is the 500 millibar vorticity, and we're gonna zoom in because that is a, a little bit far out there, and so we can kinda zoom in for you guys here. So. Now, this is what we want to look at here. As we head towards the 26th, watch what comes on shore. And you can see that energy, the vorticity advection. And, and really what's happening here is this is going to cause energy and lift for the storm systems at the surface, which will get you your storm systems. And you can definitely see the divergence there, the energy coming in. This kind of measures the spin in the atmosphere in the upper levels. And you can see as we head towards the 27th and 28th, look at those black lines start to close off. You get that circular pattern. That's important. And when you see these things deepen and close off, that's when these things really start to ramp up, which you'll see here in a second on the radar. Now, look what happens. I mean, look at that energy swirl into the planes here. So with this type of look, you'd suspect the uh, the uh, storm, which is going to bring all hazards, to really start to ramp up right off the lee of the Rockies. And the Rockies can actually influence these low pressure systems. They can help deepen the low pressure systems. So I would suspect something like this is a really good plains winter storm. And maybe even the Midwest as well, if it can hold itself together. But you can see this is around the 28th now at 7 p.m. We head towards the 29th, and this is going into hyperdrive now. Plenty of vorticity there, plenty of energy. It's going to really be cranking as it heads into the central plains. And, uh, and even into the Midwest, you can see that energy still very closed off. After a couple of days of these being closed off and you get that energy, usually these low-pressure systems will become... Um, 
really barotropic and they'll get sucked into the energy and once that starts happening they'll start to weaken so i'd suspect with this type of look even though there is some decent energy there the the, the low pressure system will begin to weaken once it crosses kind of iowa minnesota missouri the track's going to change between now and then but i would suspect you would see weakening after around the mississippi oh you know between the missouri and mississippi river but you know this tracks into the northeast part of the United States on the 30th so still something to watch you can see it moves kind of redevelops off the coast just a little bit we'll have to watch that another wave coming in later we'll talk about that in a separate video but we'll look at the precipitation real quick and we'll uh, take this out and you, you know look at this now the 26 you can see that wave moving in with that vorticity I was talking about the the trough and uh, you'll get a response at the surface and you can see that slam into Washington, Oregon, Northern California. Those are very high snow rates. You're talking about 0.2 to 0.5 inches of liquid. So that's not snow, that's liquid. So that's about like, you know, two to six inches of snow falling in probably, uh, let's see here, it'd be a six hour period. So an inch an hour or so in that area. So very heavy snow in the Northern part of the United States, uh, California. You can see as we head towards the 27th, around 1 a.m., this wave starts to move into the West Coast. Now, let's go back to that real quick. We want to look at the cold air here. So this, uh, as we head towards the 27th here at 1 p.m., this low pressure system, still pretty strong. You'll notice with these types of systems, they'll be very strong as they come off into the shore. So it's going to be very strong initially in the far western coast of the United States, there might be kind of a, a lull here in the Rockies. But once this low pressure system moves across the Rockies, it could deepen and redevelop again here in the plains and really go into hyperdrive. And as you can see here, as we head towards the 28th, it's kind of just meandering, but uh, around 7 p.m. on the 28th, this thing blows up. Okay, and this is Several runs of the GFS. The Europeans is also showing this. Again, the details are going to change. We're really, what I'm really impressed about is the pattern, the upper level pattern that could support some pretty crazy activity near and a little after Christmas and before New Year's. Very nice cold front there. You can see that temperature gradient. So we do have some cold air kind of hanging around here in the United States, in the central United States, all the way into the southern parts and very good temperature gradient so there's going to be nice south winds these winds will kind of go around these isobars and got plenty of moisture out ahead of this in the gulf so plenty of time to bring up some moisture it's just waiting for a nice little low pressure and uh you know to get that draw and, and look at that look at that very nice warm front right there and this is your kind of your rain snow line up here that 540 line plenty of precipitation even behind this for some decent snow here's a high pressure up here really close to the low another one out here this is the ideal look for a snowstorm something we've been missing for the past couple of weeks as we head towards the 29th overnight this moves into nebraska along i-80 from you know a little north of des moines through omaha all the way out into uh, denver again the track's going to change but the likelihood of a large storm system in the central U.S. and the plains, very high around this time period. Out ahead of it, along this cold front, there's going to be plenty of moisture here for potential for severe weather. Okay, When you get days of moisture return and a very deep low pressure system and high temperatures, you can get some severe weather even in the winter. Blizzard potential is there on the back side wherever this does line up. And as we head towards uh, the 29th, you can really see this going into hyperdrive as it moves into Iowa. Still a really nice tail of a, a cold front right there. And on the back side is where your heaviest snow is going to be. Typically with these types of snowstorms, these, you know, the most impressive ones have that comma look like we see right here. That is something that's been missing as of late. And we finally have a storm system that could really, you know, when you get those cutoff lows or uh, the uh, closed off lows up in the upper levels, usually you'll get a comma head type of uh, system where you get enough cold air drawn in behind a very deep low pressure system and very tightly packed isobars and good conveyor belts of moisture streaming into this thing from the east and the mid levels and upper levels and also the south from the gulf and you really can get 
you know, your heaviest snow is typically going to fire on the northwest side, and you can also get thunder snow. Your best bet for thunder snow would be near the rain to snow line. Again, that's going to be details we sort out later. That's going to change quite a bit, but the potential is there at least. And then as this heads towards the 29th this and the 30th, this will move into the Midwest. Like we said, with the upper levels, after a while, these things kind of get sucked in and become barotropic. They shear out. They kind of weaken, but they do spread out a little bit. So you could get some snow on the backside as far north as Minnesota, Wisconsin, but it's going to be lighter. You know, you can get some wind with them, some snow squalls on the backside, but overall it's going to weaken a little bit. Could get some snow out ahead of this thing near the warm, near the warm, a little north of the warm front area. And, uh, you know, it's again, that's going to be kind of hard to tell this far out, but you're usually going to have mix, mixing issues on the northeast side of these types of systems. Your best bet for snow will be on the northwest side. But nonetheless, the threat is there for the northeast to at least get in on some of this action. Now, as we head towards the 31st, you're going to have a much better chance uh, on the back side where there's going to be enough cold air and you're going to get northwest winds and also some lake effect snow as a result. So that's the general storm system. You know, in terms of mounts, this type of system usually does produce those 6 to 12 inch plus amounts. Again, it's very far out there. What we're going to look at real quick here is the instability. I want to show you the uh, severe weather potential as well that, that's definitely there as we head towards the 20, I believe this will be the 28th when this thing is really going. So we got some instability here. All you need is about 750 for severe weather and then isolated severe weather if you have enough wind shear, maybe 500 or so. And you can see that there is some elevated instability. Uh, now what's going to happen is you're going to get thunderstorms probably with this type of look from Oklahoma all the way down into Texas and then some isolated severe weather as well. As we head towards the 29th, you could see another redevelopment here in Mississippi maybe uh, Louisiana and Alabama here on the 29th, around peak heating, which is around 1 to 4 p.m., maybe a little earlier. You know, you look at the moisture, and uh, the moisture, you know, the shear is obviously there. We got lots of uh, wind shear, and then there's plenty of moisture here. This is what I call the gates of the Gulf method. You kind of just look at where the winds are near the Gulf a couple of days ahead, and you can see that they are out of the southeast, and into Texas. So this thing will be drawing up moisture out ahead of this system. That first low pressure system that moves through around the 25th, that Christmas storm, will bring up some moisture. And if that cold front doesn't get crashed into the Gulf, the Gulf will still stay open and still pool moisture into Texas. And because of that, you'll have enough moisture for the second storm that moves through. So you can see that kind of moving through around the 27th or so, 28th. And uh, there it is right there around the 29th, that main storm that comes out. Plenty of moisture, 60s dews. So there's lots of moisture there in Texas, Louisiana, and Arkansas for potential, maybe in Oklahoma as well, for some potential for some thunderstorms, maybe some isolated severe weather all the way out to Alabama on the 29th. So those first two couple lows will draw up some moisture and pool some moisture in the southern U.S. So we'll be making some videos on that if it looks like that's going to be a concern. So, you know, that's what we're going to look at for now. Again, lots of rain and wind out ahead of this thing. You know, if you look at the uh, precipitation amounts, I mean, this is uh, going to be pretty impressive. We'll look at the uh, total QPF just for fun. I'm not going to look at snowfall amounts. It's getting a little far out there, and I, it's just a, it's going to change. I don't want to get people's hopes up you know if you live in omaha or something there's probably going to show you a foot or so but that's going to change the powerful look is definitely there for a snowstorm but the track will change between now and then but you can see uh, obviously this uh, storm is putting out two to three inches of liquid or so so plenty of rain with this type of system from the plains through the midwest and also out in the west coast of the United States. The two best areas are going to be Nebraska, Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas, maybe all the way up to Minnesota, kind of wrapping around, and then also Oregon, uh, you know, Washington, Oregon, and Northern California. Those are the two best areas with the system, but other areas in the West and maybe far Northeast will uh, be impacted by this thing as well. So that's going to wrap it up, folks. Uh, click the subscribe button if you like these types of videos. Hope you have a great day. Comment below if you like the winner so far, and we'll see you soon.